mad scientist. Ah, oh, fuck away, stop it. Oh. So, don't bring your apple cider vinegar with you in a shaker bottle and add turmeric, ginger, magnesium, glutamine, PCAAs, bioprene, pepper, and all that shit together and shake it up. Because this is what will fucking happen. It just exploded everywhere, all over this fucking frame, the part. My t-shirt just got blasted. The worst of all was my eyes. It <laughs> blasted me so hard in the eyes. I love that you're still drinking it. <laughs> I love that you waste it. Relax, serenity. All I've got to do is have this, eat my food, have it there. You know, if I can, then. I'm Chris Gethin. I'm going to be training to prepare for an Ironman. I'm giving myself six months, and we're going to do it. All right, guys, day 162, and we are back in the lab where we started six months ago. We've gone full circle. Did that go quick? Yeah. No, it took ages. It's <laughs> dragged months. along, yeah, six months. Anyway, so we are here uh, for Judgment Day to see what results come out of the lab. You know, obviously the mileage that I've been putting in has given me results where I feel that I've had a positive effect, that I've been able to maintain muscle and improve my cardiovascular fitness, but who knows? Hey guys, so the results are in. I just got out of the bod pod and very, very happy with what I've been able to achieve over the uh, past six months. This is what I'm really, really happy about. I started off at a 15.2% body fat. I finished at an 11.7% body fat. Well, no surprise, I'm gonna drop a bit of body fat uh, following this sort of program. However, my lean body weight finished at 190.7 pounds. So that means that I've dropped approximately three and a half percent body fat, and I've actually put on four pounds of muscle during this time. We're gonna get into the FTP test now and see if I've actually increased my cardiovascular endurance. We're starting at 5.5, we may increase that, but more than anything, I have to continue at that speed, but we're gonna increase the incline. And then I've got that chart there, the ball chart, that scale, where I will put up my fingers to say two, very light, three, moderate, eight, very, very hard, and uh, 10, I'm pulling by my lips now. I remember in the beginning they said that you can't change this readout much because it's something that you can't, it's, you're kind of born with it. You're either born with a great VO2 max or you're not. You can't really generally train it to increase that much, that substantially. So it'll be interesting to see if there is any change. Certainly didn't feel like it. So this is the big value, this is your VO2 max, 52 milliliters per kilogram per minute of oxygen. Yeah. So that's what you were today, and then in February you were 44.1. Wow. So that is a significant increase. That's a great increase, yeah. I'm that, really happy about that. So 18%, 17.9% increase. 17.9% increase, that's yeah. good huh? That's pretty good. That's, yeah, that's great. No, that's quite impressive. That is the end of day 162 and it's a very happy ending. I'm just over the moon with the results that I was able to attain over this six month period. When I'd started off at 44 in my age category, it was between good and excellent. And now I'm in the superior category. So it goes to show that you can live 
respect in both of these worlds. You can live the world as a bodybuilder and as an endurance athlete without losing muscle. If anything, you can possibly build muscle. But remember, you have to supplement and train like a bodybuilder and especially eat like one. However, you can incorporate the endurance outlook. I'm very happy that this program has definitely worked out very, very well. Now it's just the hard part of, uh, and the essential part of crossing over that Ironman finish line uh, this weekend. So uh, we're on the right track to do so. We're gonna be doing a little bit of legs. We're gonna be doing a little bit of upper body as well because we will not be hitting a workout on Thursday. Thursday we travel up to Coeur d'Alene. We'll not be training then. So, after my run this morning, I went home and uh, did some work, got on a computer, had my hair did, and now I'm at the airport, and I'm not flying out for a change. I am actually here to greet my parents. My parents have come over, they've flown all the way from Wales uh, to come visit me and put pressure on me at this week's Iron Man. You know, Dad has always been with me, uh, you know, on a con competitive front when I was racing motocross like every weekend he kind of knows what is required and the mental state that I kind of go in I kind of close myself off and whatever and he knows how to communicate with me in that regard so you know it'll be um, it'll be good to have them here so uh, looking forward to getting them here in Boise getting carb loading on the Idaho potatoes actually good timing and there they are look See if they spot me. Spotted me. Hello, there they are. So Chris is a lucky boy. His mom is in town. And she is getting his bike shirt ready to go. The scissors aren't too good. They're not that good? Oh, dang it. What is? <laughs> We're getting there. She's making it work. I'm just about to ruin his shirt. Yeah, well. You're making it better than he has. Mum's mum's fixing me up, so I've got some pockets in the back, so I can fill myself up with food. Because the little pocket is only gonna fit feed a little child. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Well, I was up at. 3.45 a.m. this morning, because, uh, man, I got so much work to do. And uh, this is my last workout day here in Axiom. <laughs> I got the bike there ready, so as soon as I get my ass out of the gym, I get straight onto the bike, finish the bike, get straight into the run. It's all about time efficiency. Uh, often people say, God, how do you get all that stuff done? Or I have the opposite, they'll say things like, oh, it's easy for you, you work out for a living. You work out for a living, do I fuck? I get all my training done, uh, and I'm home by about eight, eight, to eight, eight o'clock in the morning. Then I am working all friggin' day. Let's fucking do this. just finished the bike here on day 164 and then went straight into my run it was only a 20 minute run the bike was a little bit harder than I anticipated because I was going into a headwind the majority of the time but I still tried to put in my eight minutes Ironman pace four minutes easy spin I'm so hungry now I need to get some of my food in 
I can smell food. Have you had food? Yeah, waffles. Waffles, you've had waffles. Waffles. Waffles good? Yeah. Oh, and look, mum's sewing my bike top here. Perfect. Looking good. Ah. Look at this. I got such an easy life. I come back, mum's doing my top. There's my stack of waffles. Life couldn't be better. We're putting on the quick, the quick release, quick, not quick release, quick release <laughs> or whatever, good laces. So we just took them off the traces. So that's what I used in the half Ironman, which were good. They're very light. But after say 10, 12 miles running in these, I feel, you know, they kind of slap on the bottom of my feet a little bit. I've become a bit of a shoe connoisseur now, after all this running, I know exactly what my feet want and what they don't want. So I'm gonna put these laces in. You know, my laces don't have the option of undoing as I'm racing, as I'm running. You know, this will just stay tied up all the time, but God, they are a bummer to put in. So just as well. Won't they also help got, you in transition? Yeah, in transition, obviously, it's a lot faster. I don't have to tie up any laces. But God, I'm cutting myself. Ooh. Ooh. But they are a bummer to put in, and luckily I've got Dad to take off the burden here. <laughs> Destination at the bed and breakfast. What a fantastic choice! It's about five miles from Port Lane. Town is down there. You can kind of see the lake in the distance, and it's like a very Victorian feel to this uh, English Victorian feel. I'd say to this bed and breakfast. Fantastic downstairs. Check out this freaking bath. So I'm going to make sure that I have myself a good soak in here, and loosen up those stiff tissues. But this is the hardship. I don't want to freaking do an Ironman being in this comfort. I've got to go for a swim down in that lake now. Can I just do laps in here instead? Yeah, you could just kick your feet back and forth. Put the bubbles on. Yeah, it's like the same. I think yeah. it's the same. 